Welcome, this is uh, Ulf Landmesser from Charité Berlin. Uh, we are here at the ESC Update meeting in Davos and it's my great pleasure to be together with Hans-Peter Schultheis, who um, is of course an expert in the area of myocarditis. And we have discussed here at this meeting the topic, do we need guidelines in uh, myocarditis? And it's certainly an area where we have learned a lot from uh, histological studies, imaging studies over the past year. And maybe let me start, Hans-Peter, what do you think? Do we need guidelines and what are the reasons for that, why we should uh, use more or get more recommendations how to manage patients with myocarditis? Yeah, um, hello, Ulf. Nice to be with you. Um, I think it's absolutely necessary that we need guidelines because uh, reality in the clinical daily work shows that a lot of patients don't get a clear-cut diagnosis. Um, and the cause for that is that the endomyocardial biopsy, which in my opinion is the only way to get a clear-cut diagnosis, um, is not coming up in the guidelines. It's only saying that it might well be, but it's not really proven, and therefore we don't have that. The other aspect is that in the last years, imaging, what you already talked about, um, is coming up more and more. However, the problem is whenever you look for papers who controlled these imaging results by endomyocardial biopsies, you clearly can show that the results from the imaging is not very good. And it's very easy to understand. One principle which we really need to know before we want to decide whether the patient has to be treated and if how we have to know whether there's viral persistence or not. And there's no imaging method so far which is able to detect virus in the heart. That means whatever the MR tells you, you never will get the information you really need because you have to know whether there's a virus or not. I, I'm Hans Peter, I think this brings us exactly to the next uh, important issue. So, so you uh, would say we need more biopsy in order to make a histological diagnosis first of all, but also to know what is causing the myocarditis. Is it an infection or is it rather an autoimmune process? And I think one of the issues is of course how that impacts your management. Maybe you can give us a little insight in your experience how your management is guided by the biopsy. And as you know, we have a large cohort of patients now. We have more than 10,000 patients where we got biopsies. And we now retrospectively analyze that. And you can clearly show that inflammation is not inflammation. It depends which cell type you find in the biopsy. And every cell type has its own number where you can say it's pathological or it's still normal. To give you the two extremas, cytotoxic T cells, you need more than three cells per square millimeter to say this patient has with a sensitivity and specificity of more than 90% a bad prognosis. On the other side, if you take CD45 RO, you need more than 60 cells per square millimeter to give a clear-cut answer whether it's, it has a bad prognosis or not. That shows you already how differentiated the diagnosis nowadays is. And all this information you only will get by endomyocardial biopsies. That means it's not only histology, but it is the whole immune histology, including adhesion molecules and these things. And it is a virology and it's molecular biology looking whether you have an active replication of the virus, which is additionally extremely important. What would be, from, the, from your perspective, for the from the clinical side, uh, the indication for biopsy? Which patients we, uh, no, I think you would recommend? And that's what the guidelines say. In acute fulminant myocarditis, progressive heart failure in between days, it's a clear-cut indication to make endomyocardial biopsies. But these are very, very rare cases. You want to exclude giant cell myopsies. Exactly, for example. Um, but what I think is a, the, the most important um, aspect is in chronic heart failure, so-called dilated cardiomyopathy, when you have excluded coronary heart disease, hypertension, valvular heart disease, and so on. But you still have heart failure. And what is the cause? And you can't give an answer. And especially in these chronic forms of the disease, the imaging doesn't tell you anything. Mm -hmm. So this is, for me, the biggest group of patients where you should take biopsies. And the second group is where you have a slowly progressive process regarding heart failure. 
there might be somewhat the question, what is chicken, what is egg? So if you have heart failure, you might also, due to the uh, cardiac disease, have some inflammation in the heart, or the inflammation may be the cause of heart failure. How do we separate this, uh, this uh, question of causality, basically? Yeah, you, you are right, but if you don't have any other cause, then um, inflammation should be the cause. I give you, as, as one aspect, but nobody has looked for that yet, these are the classical, genetic forms of cardiomyopathy. And there's a, a, a very good sentence that phenotype is not um, um, genotype, and genotype is not phenotype. And everybody asks himself, why is that the case? So probably, even if you have a genetic form of a cardiomyopathy, inflammation might play a role. But nobody has looked for that yet. There are two papers in the literature, uh, um, one in ARVD, and one in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where in a very small cohort of patients it could be shown that if you have inflammation, then the progression of the disease is rapid. As of today, what would be your, if you see in the biopsy, let's say, an inflammation like the cytotoxic T cells, where you think this patient have a bad prognosis, what would be your recommendation for the management of these patients today? Or should they go into a study? Now we, now we have clear criteria um, regarding, for example, immune histology, exclusion of viral persistence, and then we clearly say that the clinician should think about whether the patient should be treated with immunosuppressive agents. Yeah, then you have to see, are there contraindications and, and, and. But if there are no contraindications, then for my opinion, those patients should be treated. And there are two papers, one from Andrea Fustacci, it's a prospective randomized study, it's not so big, so had 42 patients in both groups, and, um, but the results are enormous. Mm -hmm. And there is a second paper, sorry for that, which we published um, some months ago, and we analyzed not prospective randomized on the basis of what Andrea showed, um, patients with the clear criteria of immunological active myocarditis, mm -hmm. and we have treated 114 patients, and in nearly every patient there's a significant improvement. Mm -hmm. And we also have the long-term run in the middle five years, mm -hmm. and over the whole time there's no relapse and nothing, and the patients are stable. So these are the only two papers which are published so far, but I agree what we need are really prospective randomized studies to prove that. There's no doubt. I, I think to conclude, Peter, I think you ha have um, set the stage for, for this. So you and your data suggests that this is very important to follow in this direction. And I think it certainly deserves more attention. And, and uh, in the future, we, we will need uh, to include it in our management of the patients. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.